Okay, thank you, Dr. Ala, for the presentation. He made my presentation easier because <coughs> he covered all the various systems, but he left me only with problems. So what I'm going to talk about is only problems of the pneumatics and hydraulic systems and uh, how to prevent these. Uh, but actually, the answer is uh, you already have the answer, you know. So, uh, you know, you often hear people who are uh, using their cars for, I don't know, they drive it to the, to the ground for 20, 30 years. What do they say usually about their car? How, how can they drive it for so many miles? Usually, what's typically people brag about that, right? Huh? The steering, st well, they change the oil regularly, right? Changing the oil. They say, well, I, I drove the car for 20 years, still runs great, my old Mercedes, but I change the oil regularly, okay? So uh, the pneumatic system is uh, in a way like that. You have to change uh, the oil, which is the working fluid, because the system is designed uh, with certain properties, viscosity properties that should be maintained in order to do uh, adequate lubrication for the system. Because when, uh, when the system heats up from friction, viscosity breaks down, and when that breaks down, people, uh, parts uh, uh, come uh, uh, in contact, and then you have what's called uh, you know, the rubbing or the contact between the parts, or the fancy word is boundary lubrication. Boundary lubrication is when there is not enough film thickness between the various parts to do adequate lubrication. So the key thing is uh, uh, changing the oil for the, uh, for the system, uh, in particular for the hydraulic system, of course, will get rid of the, con the uh, particulates that come off during the operation of the system because things break down, things wear down. Uh, you know, if you, even humans break down, right? If you <laughs> run so far, uh, uh, your uh, joints break down and so on, ligaments. I, I did this, you know, don't run that far. Uh, Okay, so particulates come off and then into the system. So in order to get rid of the particulates, we must have adequate filtration system, okay, that will filter out uh, the particulates because these are uh, extremely abrasive, okay? So they travel through the system, and what do they do? You have the small particle impinges on the surface, and uh, uh, it causes uh, damage. And this damage releases even more particles which uh, now travel the system damage and uh, causing uh, a lot more damage. So the first key thing for uh, maintenance of the system is to uh, do the, the regular preventive maintenance of oil change, okay? That's the key thing. The next thing is to pay attention to leakage to the system. Do not ignore leakage, even if it's very small, even if it's a single drop, because a single drop can add up, okay? You might say, okay, it's just a single drop from my uh, pneumatic uh, hydraulic system. But imagine this, a single drop per second is actually equivalent to 400 gallons per year. That's a lot of oil, right? So do not ignore leakages. And that's not because not only we want to save oil and uh, not ignore the leakages, but when your system is leaking, actually it's intaking contaminants into the system. So that means your system is open somewhere. It's an open circuit somewhere. And as the system, as uh, Dr. Ala explained how it interacts, uh, you know, actuate in different direction, it intakes this dirt, this uh, whatever in the environment and introduce it into the system, the contaminants. Okay, so with the introduction of the contaminants, the, the problem can, uh, 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 you know, go exponentially in terms of, of damage to the system. So the key things is the preventive maintenance of the system by changing the oil and, and so on. And uh, the next thing is not to ignore leakages in the system and to uh, design also uh, uh, the system uh, in such way uh, to, uh, or the selection of the working fluid to withstand the load, okay? In other words, if you design it for a specific uh, objective, uh, do not overload the system because things break down maybe sooner 
uh, the working fluid, the viscosity of that. If you're designing and overloading the system, it breaks sooner. So you must do the preventive or the maintenance on it based on usage. Okay. Uh, of course, you should visit the uh, manufacturing uh, uh, recommendations on that, but also it depends on the usage. So you must have uh, good accounting, like you do with your uh, bank account. Okay, how much you spend, how much comes in, how much what's left. Okay, what's the lifetime left in this uh, equipment or this part? Uh, you must have a, a clear and clean log where you know when you should change, you know, your relief valve there, your relief there here. So if you, if you have a, a nice schedule in Excel sheet, and this could be simple on Excel sheet where you log or you're changing parts and your oil changes and so on, you could uh, save yourself a lot of money in terms of uh, less damage to other, you know, lateral, collateral damage to other bigger uh, parts, and uh, uh, you could save yourself in terms of uh, downtime, of course, right? When the system breaks, downtime, and then, you know, uh, you go home. So uh, here is uh, some pictures. I will show some pictures. Like I said, Dr. Ala left me with a problem, so I, ha I have only ugly pictures. <laughs> I don't have fancy pictures. But uh, obviously, uh, the system, the hydraulic system requires some functions. Uh, this is uh, hypothetically, we're saying it's not, uh, uh, it's just an energy conversion. It does not generate energy. So it just converts energy starting with a prime mover. Uh, so we have a prime mover somewhere. So you have a, a prime mover, okay? And in the end you have the actuator, okay? And in between you have the stuff in between. But you have a prime mover which provides the energy, electrical energy moving the system, and then you actuate. How do you actuate? Either linearly or rotationally or a combination of both depending on your task. But okay, what's in between is your system which is connected to a pump or the, difference, uh, the different type of pumps like uh, Dr. Ala explained, depending on your application, if you want high pressure, if you want low pressure, how much you're willing to spend. Okay, all these factors come into which pump you must select depending on your application. And then it goes to gauging the pressure. You must have a certain operating pressure to overcome whatever load you are doing. And then that goes uh, uh, connected to a pressure control valve and then a relief valve for over the system. If you are uh, pressurizing the system over what's required, then you can relieve the pressure from the system. And then directional control valve, which direct the, uh, the flow direction and then going into the, uh, finally, to the actuator, which is doing the actual motion of the, uh, for the system. Um, the next is the pneumatic system is a little cleaner. We all know this air is a lot easier to deal with uh, than hydraulic systems, but not capable of the same uh, 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 accuracy like Dr. Ala alluded. It has air is what? It's gas. Gas is what? Compressible. Compressibility is a problem. So if you want to move things, actuate things and move them accurately, or, uh, you know, precisely, well, you know, out of luck. Go to hydraulics and deal with the, you know, the dirty system. But if, you, if your system can, you know, the placement is limited and so on, then you can go with the, uh, with the pneumatic system and, and live with that. And it starts with, again, with a, a prime mover, which is, uh, in this case, instead of pumps, is a compressor, pressurizing the reservoir to a certain level, and then go into, uh, uh, the, what we call the FRL system, very important for a pneumatic system, uh, which does what? Filtrate, regulate, and lubricate the air that's working. It's important to have this in the system, and it's important to keep good uh, um, maintenance record on it, okay? Uh, so particulates come in into the air, uh, so it must be placed immediately uh, before uh, you introduce your working fluid into the system in order to get rid of the particulates, then you can, you can regulate this and perhaps you need some lubrication for the air in order to travel along and seal, you know, the, the creases in the, in the system. So you, not, you uh, that provides some lubricant. Then you have directional control valve and into the actuator you're doing the motion, like we said, linear or uh, rotational. Um, um, hydraulic system problems not maintaining correct pressure. One of the biggest errors, like I mentioned before, is not containing uh, the pressure while the pump is working. And what would be the cause of that? Not having enough pressure. Huh? Leakage, that's right. If it's leaking somewhere, then you cannot sustain that pressure. 
So check for leaks. And that should be, well, there are two cases. It should be sometimes easy, because if it's oil, then you can see the spill of oil. And sometimes it's not so easy if it's internal leakages, OK? In the case of hydraulics. In case of uh, uh, pneumatics, then you can always uh, hear the passing gas, right? The pass gas, kind of, <laughs> you know, you can hear it, right? So it's easy to de detect these, uh, these problems. Uh, developing uh, excessive pressure during operation due to excessive uh, 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 flow resistance. Why? The pressure will build up in the system. Like the pressure build up in you right now with my presentation, you want to go home, right? <laughs> huh? The pressure is building? OK, give me a few more minutes. Why does the pressure build up? The relief valve clogging somewhere. There has to be clogging somewhere. Some loose material come in and then clog the system, and then your, your pressure build up. So again, preventive maintenance by changing your filters and so on, you can go a long ways in uh, taking care of this problem. So there is a clogged uh, filter somewhere, or perhaps in some cases, some mechanical, a bent uh, you know, piston rod or so on is not giving you, uh, you know, the uh, correct operation. Uh, now, what's important in the hydraulic system design is to uh, determine what's the, uh, the oil that to be used in the, uh, uh, it's very important, is the viscosity of this oil should be, uh, is, one, is the most important parameter. Uh, the oil should, of course, contain uh, uh, antioxidant, uh, uh, it should be hydrolytic, uh, uh, and so on. It should have antioxidant, anti-wear. Uh, additives that can uh, help your system, uh, uh, the longevity, uh, longevity of the system. <coughs> uh, now, uh, the viscosity in index is important, like I said, and this viscosity, of course, is a transient depending on the, your system usage. So uh, you don't want to pick the viscosity to, to be uh, too high. You know, don't just arbitrarily use, you know, 10W30. Uh, if it's asked for that, 10W20, okay, I have a bunch of cans that can use them. Well, you know, you might be damaging stuff because if it's too thick, too sticky, the viscosity, it means higher <coughs> resistance uh, and uh, higher resistance, uh, meaning uh, lower speeds, your system will not operate as it should. So uh, follow the specs on that. Lower viscosity, on the other hand, or if you wait too long in the system, viscosity breaks down, and then what you have is a bunch of leakages, right? At lower viscosity, uh, things start to leak in the thing. So important then to do preventative maintenance, if it's a large system, is to sample the fluid, the working fluid, is to sample it with a vacuum pump. So you go into the system, you make a cut, and you insert a vacuum pump, <coughs> and you draw some of that. It's important when you do this process is, is to check, you know, uh, for the guidelines of drawing some of that uh, oil, it should be at the operating temperature, right? Because your test should be relevant to what you're operating at. It should be at the operating temperature. And when you do it, uh, to follow the guidelines for safety and so on if, to handle the, the, the hot oil. Uh, okay, the hydraulic system <coughs> maintenance once correctly selected, hydraulic fluids are the, um, used to be adequately maintained, uh, uh, like I said, by taking periodic samples of that and checking the viscosity. So important maintenance recommendations will to keep the hydraulic fluids cool, okay, to keep the hydraulic fluids dry, uh, and keep the hydraulic fluids clean, okay, and also to repair fluid leaks immediately uh, without ignoring them, so to prevent intake of contaminants into the system. You want to keep the fluid uh, cool, of course, to uh, certain specs, you want to keep it dry. You don't want to get water in that because uh, that uh, causes cavitation in your system. And then you have uh, a lot of issues. You might have stuff like this, right? Uh, scoring of, the, um, of this piston, for example. Uh, some more ugly pictures, you know, the vein pump here of the surface also scoring. Uh, you have the, the marking because of cavitation and because perhaps boundary uh, lubrication or uh, parts coming in contact with each other because there is no adequate uh, lubricant film on the surface. Uh, 
So contamination uh, is a serious problem and it should be monitored. You should also take some samples and do a uh, counting okay, of, the, of the particulates that come out. There is some particulates you can live with. There are some particulates you cannot live with. Okay? <coughs> so, uh, so here's the cartoonish thing where these, these ones you can live with. Maybe they can get filtered from your system with your filter. But these are the nasty ones. Why? They're very abrasive, okay? They come in and then what they do, you know, they're eating up your system, okay? So you have to uh, pay attention, use the adequate uh, filter, uh, filter uh, size to, to remove these particulates. <coughs> okay, uh, consideration should be taken if there is, a, if you suspect there is vibration involved in the system because that cause, uh, uh, further problems for you in terms of uh, the operation and, and so on. Uh, in comparison with the, uh, now the hydraulic system, pneumatic system, like I mentioned earlier, is a lot cleaner, it's, uh, but uh, with the high compressibility, it's less accurate. So it depends on the application. And uh, uh, the problems with the pneumatic system is loss of uh, the, 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 the pressure in the system and so on. Increased load on the air compressor, so on and so forth. Guidelines for these light, in the design, lightweight uh, valves must be guarded against dirt. So you must have like shielding on the valves in order not to have dirt come in and so on. So you don't have to deal with that. Uh, the unit must be free of dirt, ports, valves should be closed before the line uh, connection is given. Okay, so I will uh, uh, not keep you too long. This is the FRL unit that I mentioned earlier, which is uh, air filtration regulator and application. And uh, uh, important maintenance recommendation, check cylinders and valves, uh, check the uh, return spring, make sure it's quick and uh, given the correct stiffness as required, and the general cleanliness of the system, check for the wear and tear of the mechanical parts, and check the uh, conductors of the uh, fluid or the piping conditions for a pneumatic system. Uh, perfect maintenance of engineering systems starts with a good design. So design it such as it doesn't cause you cavitations. Do not place the pump above the tank because you know you will have cavitation. You know, so make sure you flood the pump, in other words, before into taking in the fluid into the system and so on. Uh, in pneumatic systems, the real problems are related to servicing of air and pipelines uh, uh, layout and the uh, periodic inspection of the pipelines filters should be undertaken and given uh, due to, to importance. Pneumatic valves, <coughs> cylinders should be checked and maintained. So I conclude with that. I say change the oil in your car and it will run <laughs> and then you can brag about it. Thank you for your attention.